Folks, the psalmist wrote, teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. From the moment we are born, we are on a journey to the grave. Today, why don't you go with me on this journey as I tell the horrific story of the untimely death of Jeffrey Bush. Faithway Drive in Sefner, Florida. Now this is about three miles east of the Tampa city limits and we're heading to the property of homeowner Jeremy Bush. Now on the night of February the 28th, 2013, Jeremy heard a loud crash at approximately 10 p.m. at night and as he jumped out of bed and went running toward the other end of the house, uh, probably very confused about what was going on as a big hole opened up before him where his brother Jeffrey's room was. And horrifically, he heard his brother Jeffrey crying out for help for him. And he jumped into this sinkhole that had swallowed up his brother. This thing measured about 30 feet in width and at that time was just over Jeremy's head. And he jumped in and began to try to shovel his brother out. All he could see at that time was the corner of his mattress and the corner of his bed. He set a cable going down into the ground. And a short time later, a sheriff deputy arrived and pulled Jeremy out of the hole for his own safety as there was more foundation that was crumbling into the sinkhole. So as you can imagine, uh, this made national news attention all over the nation as different medias uh, covered it. And late that night, of course, uh, they, they brought out uh, ground penetrating radar, uh, ground penetrating cones uh, to test, to see how safe the property was, of course. And as they tested uh, with these ground penetrating radar, and the ground penetrating cones, they uh, realized that there was, even though you couldn't see the sinkhole from outside the house, now this thing was about 30 feet in width and uh, eventually grew to be deeper than two stories. And uh, they checked with the ground penetrating radar and found that there was a void out here almost to the street, so uh, across the front of the property. So they pushed back the news crews for safety and uh, deemed that it was unsafe to go in at that time and try to recover uh, or even to try any rescue attempts to see if Jeffrey was still alive. Of course, this upset the, the family greatly, as I can imagine, as they were looking uh, for, for quick action to try to save their brother. And right here is a memorial to him. So honoring the loss of life and property, February 28, 2013, Jeffrey Bush, born July 21st, 1975. And that fateful night of February 28, 2013, which would become his final resting place. And the area is all fenced off right now uh, within 
this inner black fence is where the home used to sit and where the sinkhole opened up. And just two years later, in August of 2015, it once again opened up, which uh, which was certainly devastating and horrific to the family members uh, to relive that once again. They reported at that time that they came out here daily in remembrance of Jeffrey. They also deemed the properties on either side of the Bush home to be unsafe. So they evacuated and demolished both them homes as well. And looking at Apple Maps or Google Maps of Seffner, Florida, when you look up cemetery, it will bring this uh, spot up because this is the final resting place of Jeffrey Bush. Now, I couldn't find much online about Jeffrey Bush other than the fact that he graduated from Zephyr Hills High School and that his family reported that he loved fishing, playing video games, and he was a landscaper with the Department of Transportation. Seems that the chain is loose on that back gate going into the property. I'm not sure why that would be open for individual safety. It would certainly be best to be locked up so children can't play around there or curious onlookers as myself. Now I'm sure a story such as this making national media attention has drawn a lot of curious onlookers to the area. So folks, I would remind you that if you, you do come to visit the, this spot that it is the final resting place and uh, to reverence that and to also have some respect for the neighbors as well. So hence folks, as the psalmist said, teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. The psalmist attributes uh, wisdom in numbering our days and understanding that our time is limited. This reminds me of a passage in James chapter 4. This is, Go to now ye that say, Today or tomorrow I will go into such a city and remain there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. For you know not what is on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor. It is here for a little while and then it vanisheth away. Folks, our time on earth here, this life that we live, is very short. Whether you live 70, 80 years, even 100, you know, in the big scheme of things, it's a very short period of time. And as it says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, that it is appointed unto every man once to die, and after this the judgment. Those are two appointments that we have no choice but to keep, folks. The appointment with death and the appointment for judgment when we stand before our Creator. Have you learned to number your days and applied your heart unto wisdom? The Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Let me ask you, where do you get your instruction? Have you looked to God? Have you looked to the counsel of the Holy Bible? Just think about how horrific it must have been to be buried alive, to be sleeping peacefully in your bed at approximately 10 o'clock at night. to be awakened by the ground sucking you in. And you see folks, tomorrow's not promised to any one of us. And we all have an appointment with death. Now maybe you think that you have lots of life ahead of you and there'll be warning signs along the way when your time is coming to an end, but where was Jeffrey's warning sign? This type of thing happens every day. 
maybe not the ground opening up and swallowing people, but people that die in car accidents, people that just drop dead of heart attacks, accidents at the workplace that folks had planned on coming home. As James said, you know, they had plans for ne tomorrow, for next week, for next year, and that time was not promised to them. And that day, their life was required of them. So look to Jesus today, folks. Look to the Word of God. Prepare yourself. The Bible says to prepare yourself to meet thy God. And if the Bush family just happens to come across this video, my condolences to you, Jeremy, and to your family. Must have been heartbreaking to go through what you went through to lose your brother in such a horrific way. Uh, and I pray that you've found the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Jesus.